Welcome back to the next live match. Now, it's been a little while since we've done a live match. And last week, I did that video called Out of My Comfort Zone. So this is like part two of Out of My Comfort Zone, where we actually go and fish a match. Now, we went to Bonington last week, and we fished, and we did all right. We caught a few fish uh, in that video, cracked off, um, felt a few things weren't quite right, probably had too many options in terms of bait. I had a few... <laughs> It just wasn't the best session, let me just put it that way. Caught a few fish, and it was purely just me getting a feeling out process for the venue. Because like I say, this is something a bit out of the ordinary for me, really. Um, you know, I don't do a lot of like this long-range feeder fishing and these big carp and stuff. So I've had to sort of go away. And to tell you the truth, I went again for another go and actually did some filming for New Fish, which I'll put a link to the uh, video up here, which was quite a good video. That's more of a... Uh, if you just want to try fishing the method or the hybrid for the first time, you can go use them tips and you'll catch loads of fish. Um, but I also use that as a bit of a practice session for me upcoming match. It just, I had to go back. That session was so up and down in terms of my casting wasn't great. Um, I never felt my bait was quite right. I never felt uh, my feeders were fine. My, I didn't feel like my rods were strong enough. Um, in fact, when I cracked off, I actually, my rod actually improved because I had a stiffer tip. Um, and I'll, to tell you the truth, I went back the following week and I was actually, I felt like I was quite good. <laughs> um, and that's not in a big headed way. That was just like my casting was good. I even clipped up at 100 meters, like a proper measured out 100 meters and I fished out there for a while. Um, I, I was much happier with how things went. So I'm, I'm really glad I went back because if I hadn't have done, I'd have been going back tomorrow thinking, I'd have been dreading it. But I promise you guys, and I promised myself that I'd do this, get out of my comfort zone and do a few matches at Bollington, just something completely different. Now, I'm in the kitchen. Everybody loves it when I'm in the kitchen. And I'm just going to do my bait quick. Now, it's a really simple sort of thing at Bollington, really. You only really need some micros for the method um, or banjo hybrid. And you need some feed. They're, they are catching some fish on a short line. And I mean short, I mean underarming. Uh, late in the day and they're big fish now i think for for that i'm just going to keep it simple and just feed eight mil pellets it's feeder only so i'm going to use a big cage feeder with a cap on it under around some eight mils in there and then uh, uh, but i won't do that till about two hours to go but for the most part we're fishing at range 60 meters and above uh, well 60 meters and further with micros on the method um and what has come apparent is that I've tried different flavours, different mixes, different this, different that. I'm not convinced it makes that much difference. I'm sure people who are more, um, who fished Boddington more, have probably had longer to experiment and stuff. But in the two sessions I've um, been, I've caught, I don't know, 15 fish now in total, or something like that. And I've caught them on ground bait, I've caught them on plain pellets, I've caught them on four mils, I've caught them on flavoured uh, micros, I've caught them on uh, goo, I've caught them with all sorts. Anything you try, I've not had anything where I could just like hang my hat on it and go, yeah, that is stand out better than everything else. So very difficult to sort of come away thinking, what should I do? So with that in mind, I'm going to keep it simple. Like originally when I asked Steve Ringer what to fish, on the venue, he suggested, look, keep it simple, get yourself some boiler crumb, like a cell or something like that, and keep it quite simple. Like, you, it's more about the distances, that, it's more about the distances and your decision making rather than the flavors. The flavors he believes make a big, you know, play a big part in the, in the day, but ultimately you've got to be confident in what you're chucking out. And I went last week and I, and I went with this mix and I caught plenty of fish and I was happy with it. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm, not, I'm going to keep it simple. I'm not going to take any four mils. Um, I'm not going to take any ground bait this week. Ground bait's not traditionally something that people use much at Bonington, but it did work for me. Um, but the problem is I don't want to I don't want to confuse myself, giving myself too many options. So I'm going to go with the micros and I'm going to go with the boiler crumb. So the micros, as I've shown you in a recent video, that's that mix of different pellets. So we've got scrattons in there and we've got coppins in there. Um, I buy them in bulk bags. Now everyone, like, I keep bigging up Blake's uh, and it's not that I've got a sponsorship with them or anything. I just, I've genuinely, like, really like their baits. They sent me a few bits to look at. Uh, full disclosure, and it's been excellent. But I have actually bought 
um, bags of pellets because I get sick of, I, I like to have a bulk of pellets at home and having these sort of five kilo sacks of them is really handy. Um, they last for ages. So I got coppins and I got screttings. And um, so in there, I've always used sort of three parts screttings to one part coppins as my mix. And I feel like that's a nice mix for like you all around fishing. However, when I'm fishing at Bollington, what I've noticed is when you're chucking a long, long way, um, you just got to be sure your bait's still on. And I feel like I just could do a bit more like tackiness to my bait. So what I've done, I've actually upped the amount of coppins in there. So I've gone 50-50. So I've just got, um, I use a scoop actually, one of these. That's 236 mil, an American cup size. Um, and I've gone two screttings to two coppins. So, a, you know, a couple of pints of dry pellets, which will be more than enough for a match at, at Boddington. Um, and, I, I, and I think that those extra coppins will just allow me to squeeze them, them pellets onto the feeder a bit harder. If I do have to go a long way out, which I might have to, I'm hoping the fish are quite short tomorrow, to be perfectly honest with you. But if the fish are further out, I felt like I just needed that extra security of the, of the extra coppins in there. So I've just gone with that, as it's purely a gut instinct thing. I feel like I maybe just need a bit more, um, I'm going to call it glue, a bit more glue around my me, me feeder. Obviously, I don't want to go on like where it doesn't break down, but I've done my tests, tank tests at home, and I felt like 50-50 is, is not a bad working ratio. So um, for those who didn't see that video, the coppins are sticky and the screttings are not. The screttings are the ones that I believe the fish are actually looking for, they're eating, and the coppins are like your binder pellet. So I feel like the 50-50 of the two is going to be fine. I've got them in that Tupperware, so I'm just going to use bottled water because I had a bottle of water here. It saves me turning around. Um, and I'm just going to have the pellets so, that, so the water is just visible, no more than that. They're perfect. I don't want them. I quite like the idea of fishing a method. I've caught quite a few of my fish on a method rather than a hybrid. Um, and I quite like um, having a little, a little bit drier for the method. So that's the starting point anyway. So that the lid can go on that and they can go in the fridge until tomorrow and they're going to be perfect. So that's my pellets done and dusted. Absolutely brilliant. So simple as that. What I will do when I do this, the, I call it the McViles method, what I will do is I will turn the, the box over in about 20 minutes time, just so the pellets at the top get a bit of extra water as well, because obviously at the minute, the bottom two thirds of the pellets get most of the water. So that's that. I mentioned about flavorings, and I think that flavorings are quite a key part of Boddington. Although, like I say, I'm not, I'm not totally convinced on whether it's a fishy flavor thing, whether it's a, a sweet flavor thing, who knows? Um, but I am going to go with my um, the information I've gleaned from other anglers and stick with the sweet thing. So, again, I've got some boilies. These are milky ones. They're a nut bait. They smell very creamy and I've eaten them. They're very nice. Um, similar to a cell type boilie. I don't know if anyone's, if you're familiar with a cell, it's quite a nutty sort of smell. So what I did, I got the, the boilies and I whizzed them around in a blender. So, and as it was uh, whizzing around, it, it gets, it's quite light and fluffy when it's, it's just whizzing around and you've broken them boilies down on them and they're quite dry. And I need it to be a bit more tacky than that. I need it to actually squeeze together and help bind those pellets. So what I did, as I was whizzing it around, I got the matching like glug. Now this tastes like absolutely beautiful. It's so sweet and it smells divine. It smells, <laughs> it smells amazing. And I just, Slowly, while the blender was going around, I was just drizzling it in until I could see it almost like clumping a little bit. And I've done that, and it's just the perfect like concoction. Now it breaks up easy because it's boilies and not it's got no real binding power, um, but it'll it'll go on them pellets and give that extra bind. So hoping that that's brilliant. Hope that's uh, going to work. And I've done quite a bit actually. Um, it's freezeable, so I will put it back in the freezer. Um, but I've got it out for tomorrow. And if I, whatever I don't use, I'll put it back in the freezer. So that's the bait. Um, got the, like I said, I've got the micros, I've got the boiler crumb. That's gonna be spot on. Um, I've got my eight mils. And then to feed the eight mils, like I said, I'm gonna use a big feeder. And then tackle wise, like I said, I felt like my rod wasn't quite up to it, especially for chucking long way. But I'm gonna stick with it for now 
Uh, I've got the 14 foot distance master, the 4.2, and I've also got the 12 foot six distance master. That I'll use that for fishing up to sort of 65 meters. And then I'm gonna um, use the, the other one with a broken tip for chucking a bit further. Um, one other thing I did, I have put in though, is an 11 footer. Um, like I said, there has been some fish close in late on. Uh, and I'd be a fool to ignore it. So I've put that, an 11 footer in just to fish at sort of 10 meters. Um, and rig wise, I've kept it really simple. I've got um, ICS stems on where I can put a hybrid or a method on, um, no problem. Uh, rig wise, I've kept it really simple. I, I've not lost a fish yet, touch wood, touch wood. Um, I've not lost a fish at all yet on, on the hooks I've been using size 10 uh, T360s. So got them with a bayonet on. Um, I'm not going to try meat or I'm not going to try bread or anything like that yet. I'm just going to stick with wafters at the moment um, and then maybe look at those baits further down the line when it gets colder. So so that's it. So I'm, I'm absolutely itching to get going. I'm a bit apprehensive. Like I said, it's all new to me, this. It's uh, it's new fishing. It's new people that I'm fishing with as well. So yeah, it's uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be exciting. Um, Boddington's is fishing quite well. Um, it's hard, don't get me wrong, there's not loads of bites, but if you get on a few fish, I mean, you've seen in the videos we've done, they're epic, they're massive, so I'm really looking forward to it. Should be a good day. It'd be nice to get match fishing again, because I've been doing so much fishing of late, but I haven't been doing any match fishing. I've been doing filming, I've been doing bass fishing, I've been barbel fishing, I've been perch fishing. I've been fishing two to three times a week without going on any matches, and that's just how my life's sort of taken a turn. So. I'm really excited to get match fishing tomorrow um, and hopefully I won't make an absolute fool of myself. There we go, peg 90. On the peg 90 is the end, so happy with my draw. Can't complain about the draw, just need to uh, pull my finger out now. But look how flat calm it is. Unbelievable. So yeah, 90 is the end and then big stew pulses next to me. And then it's right the way down this wall, all the way down there. As you can see, there's not a breath of wind. Odd carp jumping out, but not loads. And it's simple, really. We've got some hard pellets for feeding in a bait up feeder later on, and I've just got some micros in that boily mix. And I've got a rod for short, which is a 10 foot ends on distance, uh, 11 foot ends on distance, sorry, um, which will be. It's got 10 pound detection on, straight through, and then a, a, a nice big method. I'm gonna lay on, put some pellets in down here at the end of the rocks. And then I've just set up one rod for fishing at sort of 60 meters plus, so I'm just gonna start at 70 and just fish patient for a couple of hours and just see what happens. Um, I feel like the, I'm gonna catch are gonna come to me a bit today, it's warm, but we'll see. So we'll see. But yeah, looks good. Really excited for me. First ever Boddington match. All to play for. But we should get some bites, which is nice. Can't ask for a better draw than where I've drawn, so it's up to me to do the damage and not uh, mess it up. So I drew peg 90, which is exactly where I wanted to be. All the talk before the draw was if you were from peg 84 up to sort of peg 92, which is the end peg, that is where you needed to be to, to have a chance of winning the match. It's the farm pegs and it's like the good area. Bonington's such a large venue and the fish are so big, you just never really know. Now, what was quite interesting, when I was starting off this campaign, uh, I was talking a lot to Stu Pulser. Now, Stu's a fantastic angler, one of the best I've seen, actually. No matter what style of fishing he tends to do, he wins matches at it, whether it's rivers, commercials, F1 fishing now Boddington, Medellin's, places like that, he wins, he's a match winner and he'd been giving me loads of good advice, he was brilliant, the advice he gave me was, has been fantastic and I drew next to him, I couldn't believe it. Now it was going to be great to watch Stu, as, obviously as well as fishing my match because it would give me, going forward, a better idea of how these matches are won and I was really looking forward to actually just keeping my eye on him and seeing what was going on but anyway, on to my match and I kicked off at 70 metres. Now, the lake was flat calm, like flat, like a mirror. Uh, and you could actually and you could actually see odd fish like jumping out and boshing out and what have you. But you could also see an odd fizzer. And I was seeing a few carp poke their heads out at about 30 meters. Now, 
in hindsight, I think I probably should have. I underestimated. This was actually a six and a half hour match, which gives you a lot of options in terms of chasing the fish out. And I think I started at 70 meters and you'll see I caught a fish first chuck. You don't. I wouldn't mind, it didn't go where I wanted it to. <laughs> some bites for him. Graham Swan's come for a look, look. Now the only problem is with that first chuck fish was I think I would have caught that first chuck fish closer in. I think if I'd have started at 40 meters, I would have got that that fish anyway because I think they were in front of me at the start. Uh, and I think I would have got them even if I'd have chucked in at 40 or 50 meters. But I went straight out to 70 meters and underestimating, I'm getting straight into the details of the match straight away here, but I think it's important talking about the start and how I can improve going forward. Um, because I started at 70 metres, underestimating the length of the match, because what you tend to do at Boddington, you start and work your way further out as the match goes on. Because I'd started at 70 metres, I was limiting myself of how much further I could go out. I didn't give myself enough, I, I underestimated how long the match was, in truth. If it's a five hour match, obviously it gives you sort of, if you have a cast every 40 minutes, it gives you about seven or eight casts-ish without a fish that is, to sort of creep your way out. So if you'd started at 70, you would have sort of creeped out and ended up at 90. But the problem is, because I had such a long match, I started at 70 and I didn't give myself enough water to creep up into. And of course, you can chuck beyond 100 meters, but to be honest with you, I didn't want to, I couldn't get that far. <laughs> like I maxed out at about 100 meters of my current setup. And it, I just, it was a mistake that was. Uh, but it's funny because I caught a fish first chuck. I decided to stick at that 70 metre range. Uh, traditionally at, at Boddington, or what is the known method, is to, if you don't catch a fish on a chuck, either put a little bit more distance on and go a little bit further out, creeping as they call it, so creeping out into the lake. Um, but because I caught a fish early, and I actually wanted to just sort of settle and be patient on a spot for a while, so I actually stuck at 70 metres, and then after an hour, the tip's gone round again with another one.
Now, they're all big fish at Bonington, and as you can see, they're a bit of a tussle playing them on such long, stiff rods, but it's really good fun. And I chucked out again, straight down the same hole, and it went round again. And bite time's a funny thing. Exactly the same as the last one. Yeah. Within 20 seconds, Stu. Hey. Only what people told me to, to give a go. Yeah. That fish sauce is a lovely additive though. I oh, reckon it is. I bought some the other day. I haven't tried it yet. I'm so going to try it here. But... Lovely and salty. Nice, nice stuff. Is it? Yeah, I got some the other day. Cheap and all, isn't it? Hey? Cheap. Yeah. There's nothing in There's no chemicals in that. It's good stuff. No. Still on the duo? Yeah. Same one? Same one. <laughs> Orange and pink. Yeah, you've got to be right, innit? Yeah. You haven't much been caught, Joe, has it? More yeah. just gone cold, innit? Yeah, it's felt cold the last 10 minutes, hasn't it? It's trying to yeah, get... yeah. That wind. Bit of wind, innit? So with that one in the net, I've got three fish for, you know, 30 odd pound. They're big, they're all big, they're all double figure fish within, you know, within sort of a few pound. And I'm actually leading the match at this point. So we're sort of halfway in and I've got three. A couple of anglers have got two. Stu has just got his first one. Um, and there's a couple of anglers with one fish. But I'm like sitting, sitting sweet. And I'm thinking if I can just get my decision making right, I've got a great chance here. I, I, could, I could win this on my first attempt. And that's where the wheels kind of fell off. Now, Stu didn't get his quick start like I did, but it kind of helped him, I think, in the long run because, again, talking about that match progression thing, I'd sort of plucked all my eggs in that 70 meter basket and I'd not considered moving out. So when I actually did move out, when bites slowed up, I kind of wasn't in tune with what was going on. Whereas Stu started at a similar range, 70 meters ish. Realised what wasn't it wasn't happening. Picked up a bigger rod, went a big jump out to 84, and then started catching at that new range, that new distance. But by the time I'd got out there at 84, I was a bit like, I don't really know why I'm doing this. Um, so yeah, real big lesson. And then all of a sudden, Stu and Andy to his left started catching. Now whether the fish passed me by and went to my left, it certainly felt like that. But I can't help but feel like I just probably didn't make the most of the fish when they were in front of me, if that makes sense. I probably, once I caught them three fish off that 70 metre line, I then needed to move. Um, and I probably sat on that 70 metre line too long. I kind of, those fish maybe have gone past me. Or maybe I, I caught them when they were in front of me and I caught them three fish. Because I think in total, Stu got four or five out long. Andy caught six or seven out long and I caught four out long. So maybe I'm being too hard on myself and maybe I just, they just passed me by and settled there. But I can't help but feel I made a, a bit of a mistake there. Well, just had another one, so I've got four now. Just made up a little mix with some of that in, so like a little separate mix. Maybe that's what got me the bite, I don't know, but I'm out to sort of 86 metres now. I got one. Swanos thing. You see, it's still flat calm. I haven't fed short or anything yet, but <clears throat> don't look, feel like it's a short day to me. But I was just starting to lose the faith because I got three pretty smoothly earlier on, and then just got another one then. <coughs> got me back in here but I just need the little run of fish. I was just starting to lose the faith and then we got one so whether putting a bit of that in 
has helped, I'm not sure, but we've got to buy it anyway, so it's good. Um, anyway, I ended up at 88 metres and actually caught a fish off camera. So I got to number four. Another good fish, again, like just 88 metres is a long way and it was, it was a good fish. And it, it was like, right, if I can get going again now, I could I can get to 100 metres if I need to creep out again. Um, but again, it just never seemed to happen. And this is where Stuart was just, he was five steps ahead. He weren't just one step ahead of me, he was five steps ahead of me. He, he was in tune with the venue because he's been going a lot <laughs> and doing really well. And he just knew, he knew his timings, he knew when to be in certain places. And he actually had fed an underarm in line. Um, I think it was, I'd look at my clock, I think it was half one when he fed it. And he was already on it at like two o'clock. I didn't even plan to feed it until two o'clock. And before I'd even known what was going on, he'd, he'd already got one. Or he'd already fed it and, and got one on that. And it was a great big one, like a 20 pounder. So with that, I seen Stu catch one. I picked up my feeding rod and I've, bait, I've gone to bait up and my feed has come off. And I've left a load, my line just, just sheared off. I don't know if it got caught on a rock or what, I'm not sure. Um, it just, just, just sheared off on a, I assume on a rock. Now my plan was, I, I clipped it up at 12 meters and I, I was trying to be clever. I, I sort of flicked it up the bank. So there's rocks in the edge at Bonington. And I found where the bottom of the rocks were, but I was, so I was gonna flick it up as if I was fishing down the edge, but away from, obviously still probably nine meters from the bank. So I clicked up at 12 meters and did that. But because I left a load of line in the swim, when my feed had come off, I thought, I can't feed there, because I'm. if I hook one, I'm running the risk of getting tangled and maybe losing it. So I was like, oh. So anyway, I fed my, I then decided to feed my pellets at 12 metres straight in front of me, worried about this loose line. And I think that that was a mistake. Um, but anyway, once I got that fed, I went back out long and then dropped in short. of it. I just looked up and I seen your reel going, I was like, hey, <laughs> Now, as you can see, it's really exciting fishing. I was actually holding a brew. My rod goes round, dropped my brew, but it's a great big fish. It's a fish that actually weighed 16 pounds because we weighed it on its own. Great big fish. But, and that was fine. But then when, as the match went on and I decided to gamble, I thought, I'm gonna just fish short. I'm gonna gamble and go short and, and roll the dice. Cause I felt like I needed a big finish. I wasn't in touch with what was going on out long. And I felt that just two more fish on that short line would give me a good chance of getting my money back and, and maybe coming second or third in the match. I thought Stu was well away now. He was, he'd had three fish by this point short and they were massive. Um, sort of three fish for over 50 pound, I would have said. Real big fish.
things out there. <laughs> Um, but I kind of felt like something was just off with how I fed it. I think I've made, I've clipped up at the same mark, both of them at 12 meters. Whether my fishing feed has gone a little bit further than the bait, because I've, I've had some big liners and nothing's developed. Or I, I just think I should have just brought it all in a bit too close, a bit closer. I was trying to be clever casting down the bank. And then when I've obviously lost that feeder and left some line in the swim, I hadn't thought about the distance thing. And actually when I chucked my feeding feeder out, it looked a long way out. I know it's only 12 meters, but compared to where Stu was fishing, he was fishing nine meters clipped up, but down the bank. So he wasn't fishing far out at all from the bank. My feeder was a long way past that. You know what it's like on these commercials, you can be fishing at four meters, five meters, and hooking them clean as a whistle. Yet you go out to eight meters and it's like no man's land. And I think that's the mistake I made. There were fish there, without a doubt, they were on the pellets, but I don't know whether I was just fishing over a soft bottom or something wasn't quite right. I, had, I didn't get that bit right. I was trying to be too clever, fishing a little bit, a bit further out or whatever, but by trying to be a bit clever and crafty, I kind of didn't get it right at all. So I definitely, there was definitely three fish to be caught on that short feeder line and I, and I caught one. Um, so that was a mistake. So. So that was the match. I ended up with 61 pound, which was actually fourth on the day. So not the worst result in the world, like fourth on my first ever visit. I'll take that, but I was on a good peg and this is where lack of experience came in. Um, I got off to a great start. I can't have asked for a better start. Those three fish in that first couple of hours got me off to a great start. But then when I, I stopped getting bites and the lads to my left started catching, no matter what I did, it just never seemed to, I never seemed to get a response. And other than a, a fish out of the blue at 88 meters, I never really got any sort of vibe. I was getting it right. Um, yeah, quite frustrating that, watching it sort of slip away and it was like their swims were getting better. So like I said, there is a chance the fish went and settled there, every chance, because they were getting regular bites. I think Andy might have even lost a couple as well. I think he might have had eight or nine bites out in the lake and then they were catching there. but. I'm big enough to admit that it's probably me that got it wrong. It was not that the fish passed me by. I think I just probably didn't quite get it right. I didn't get my timings right. And this is all part of the learning process, isn't it? Of course, um, like I said, I had a great day's fishing. Five fish for £61. They're, they're massive, aren't they? Great big things. Stuart had eight fish for £105. So really big fish. He won the match. Uh, carpet was second with £89 or £84. I can't remember exactly. Again seven or eight fish and then Andy who was to Stuart's left uh, at 77 pound and then my 61 and then I think there was a 49 and, a, and a, a 20 odd so something like that hard fishing but rewarding fishing and I really enjoyed it um, I learned a lot I think I've like I say I've never done a lot of this sort of fishing so it's totally new to me I am going to go again next week and I'm going to try and go for a few weeks now um, my worry is that I've probably been on the peg that my worry is I think I've probably had my match winning opportunity there on that peg. I feel like I've, I messed that one up there. That was a chance. If Stuart had been on my peg, he would have won the match. No doubt about it. He would have won the match. Um, and probably a few of the other guys as well. So a lot to learn, uh, a lot to take from the day. It's actually, I'd always looked at Boddington as like a, um, I'm going to say chuck it and chance it, but... Like, there's not a lot you can do. Like, you get what you're given kind of thing, the peggings. But having watched how Stu fished and a few of the others fished, and obviously how like people like Steve and Phil Ringham and that do so well and consistently at the venue, there's obviously more to it than that. Obviously, you need to be in good areas, but I was in a good area and I just didn't get it right. So, lots to learn, lots to take away from the day. Um, 
and hopefully you enjoyed that something totally different for me and hopefully you can all enjoy it because uh, there's going to be more of these and i'm really enjoying this uh, sort of new adventure into this long range feeder fishing